finance for dummies, specifically index funds for dummies. I'm glad we're doing this. I've had questions. Okay. You've had questions yeah. about index funds. Yeah. Index funds are a thing. Yeah, you know how are. fired up I am about T-Pain spending all his money? On a negative side, I'm that fired up about index funds. Nobody, <laughs> nobody is this fired up about index funds. Usually index funds are freaking nerds. All right, I've got the index fund and I have some paper. Shut the, f <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I like index funds. Index funds has made me a millionaire. So listen up. Dude, I'm listening. Okay, so listen up. What are low cost index? There's a beginner's guide. Apparently, yeah. if you want to pull this thing up. It's up. Okay. So let me, let, let, wait, maybe before we get into what an index fund is, why you should invest in an index fund, here, I'm going to give an analogy. Hey, David, are you a sports fan? Yeah, I am. Okay. Who you like in the Super Bowl this year? I don't know. I don't watch football. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> who do you think is going to win? Um, I don't know. The team that's doing the best right now. That's Good. awesome. Great advice there, right there. Thanks. Patriots. Ravens. Patriots. Ra Ravens. Patriots. Patriots are one and two. Ravens, I think, are uh, two and one. Anyway. The analogy here is this. Here's a little metaphor for you. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who's going to win the Super Bowl. So rather than trying to bet or pick the winners and losers, to pick the team that you think is going to win, why not bet on the entire NFL? Uh-huh. Bet on the entire this, yeah. NFL. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. you, think, you, you think I don't think I've learned something from being a fucking Dolphins fan? Losers. <laughs> losers. Went to the game against the Bills the other day. They lost like 35 zip. Loserville. 35 zip. I'm just betting on the entire NFL. And yeah. if you understand that, rather than picking one team that you think is going to win, oh, my Green Bay Packers are going to do it this year. Nope. This is the Cowboys year. Nah. Uh, go Niners. She bet on all of them. Bet on all of them. Put a bet buck on, on each. Put a buck on each. That's index investing. Let's break this down. So rather than picking a certain team, pick the entire league. Okay. Okay. All right, all right. Here we go. Let's let, let's 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 let's. Because right off the bat, it feels like you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win. Like it's only one betting. winner. Yeah, people who gamble lose. No, all I'm saying about okay with yes. this analogy. All right, but okay. go on. So anyway, let, let, what's an index fund? Let's talk about that. So that's an analogy right there. Okay. With that in mind, you're gonna pick the entire NFL league. Thirty-two teams. I don't know who's gonna win. I'm buying all thirty-two. Yeah. What does that mean? All right. So an index fund is basically a portfolio of stocks. Saying I don't know what stock is gonna go up or what is going down. Just buy them all. Okay. So basically, it's, it can be stocks or bonds, all good, what have you, and it's designed to mimic the performance of a, of a financial market index. You always hear the S&P 500, well, there's the Dow 500, or there's the NASDAQ, or there's okay. the Russell 2000. These are known as indexes, a.k.a. indices. Index. Oh. Indices. Yeah. Yeah. Not under the sea. Indices. indices. Exactly. So the reason that you would invest in an index fund is just because it makes it easy. Okay. It's like a mutual fund, right? But very l much lower cost. What's a mutual fund? Okay, it's a basket, a pool of funds. So rather than picking out stock, I okay. like this stock. I like this stock. This stock went up. This stock went down. How about this stock? I don't know about this. I don't. I, I got no time to pick this. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all moving. Buy them all. Just buy them all. One Just of them get them all. Well. We're gonna do a fund. We're gonna pull a pool of, of stocks together. Fifty? Uh, nah. Hundred? Nah. Five hundred? Now you're talking my language. That's the S&P 500. So basically, they got lower expenses and lower fees and actively managed funds. We'll talk about actively managed. And they follow what is known as a passive investment strategy. That's the, basically the premise of index. So we talked about this. There's a couple of well-known indexes out there. S&P 500, Standard & Poor's 500. That's the most common index. Those are the 500 largest companies in America. I think there's actually 505 currently in the S&P 500. But anyway, who's counting? So those are the largely, largest publicly traded American companies. Name a company, they're probably on the S&P 500. It's companies you know. Tesla, they're okay. on there. Microsoft, they're on there, okay. right? So You see where I'm going here? Yeah, I see what you're doing. Starbucks, there they are. S&P 500. You want to pull that up? Sure. Pull up, pull up the S&P 500. Pull that up. S&P 500. S&P. Standard oh, S &P. and Poor's. There we go. You also got the Dow Jones, the 30 largest companies in America. 30. Only 30. NASDAQ, those are the tech stocks. Right? Tech stocks. Oh. And then you get the Russell 2000. Those are like small cap companies. Anyway, active versus index. What the hell does that even mean? So typically, before index indexing came around, passive investing came around, which is basically... It's down. What is yeah, that's fine. Pull okay. up, pull up images of S and P five hundred, S and P five hundred images, and I'll tell you where to go. You don't have to put today; just put S and P five hundred images. All right. Anyway, before um, 
index, you had to do active investor, right? So the index, I think, when it started in the 70s, but then it really became a thing in the 90s, ETFs, exchange traded funds. Um, there's a guy called Jack Bogle. We'll pull up his link. He started a company called Vanguard. And Vanguard is the company that was like, why, why are we always trying to beat the market? You get all these stock pickers. And basically, the, the, what they, the analogy is this. Let me try to use this analogy. Um, it was a book. And they called it uh, a long a walk down Wall Street. Okay. And they basically said this analogy. To pick a stock that you think is going to be a winner yeah. is like picking a drunk person's movements walking home. Yeah. Like a drunk person, like, yeah. you, you know, he's doing this whole thing. Oh, he's going to. Oh, no. That's like picking a stock. What and that's active investing. Is he going this way? Is he going this way? I don't know. Should we go this? Can we go that? We go this? I don't know. 80% of stock pickers don't win. Yeah. 80%. What index investing does it or or passive investing is says, look, I don't know who's gonna freaking win, bro. I'm just buying all the stocks. Yeah. And over time, did you find the picture? Yeah, the, I mean, I, I went on here. I'll get I'll, I'll show you what to do. I'll show you what to do. All right, they're there. Basically, um S P five, yeah, instead of and put the put the and symbol. And put it all together. There you go. Pull that up. Keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down. Scrolling. Boom. This one right here. Uh, Make that one large. Gosh. Here are the companies in the S&P 500. You get the big dogs. Amazon. Apple. Right? Microsoft. You see how much bigger those are? Yeah. Let me get into Okay. Where'd that, where'd that thing let me, go? Let me get into okay. it. Let me get into it. There it is. But basically saying rather than trying to pick. You, do you know what um, SPG stands for? SPG. Yeah, it's right here. No. I don't know either. Okay, great. Couldn't tell you. Do you know what uh, GIS stands for? No clue. Couldn't tell you either. But do you know what all these things added up are? That's the S&P 500. Gotcha. So rather than saying, I don't know, is this one going to be red today or green today? I don't know. Who knows? How the fuck do you know? Buy the whole thing. And then over time, it goes up. You know, over time, historically, S&P has returned 10% annually over the last... 10 years from uh, 2011 to uh, 2020, it was about 11.5%. Uh, to keep things in perspective, people talk about the uh, NASDAQ tech stocks, right? NASDAQ, um, separate from the S&P, it's specifically, you know, to get the New York Stock Exchange, you get the NASDAQ. These are exchanges. Yeah. NASDAQ's gone up about 17%. Um, but here's the deal. Spe get, getting back to index funds. Um you don't actively invest in index funds. The whole point is just like, dude, put the money in, chill out, let let the market do what it do. Don't worry about it. Your costs are low. You're not getting in. You're not getting out. You're not trying to time the market. You have time in the market. You're not trying to t you know time the market. And then over time, you build wealth. That's the key to that's the key to building wealth. That's how Jack uh, Jack Bogle, founder of Vanguard, was like, this is how it's done, bro. This is how it's done. So okay. what's what's the ticket to into, into a low cost? Oh, okay, so here we go, low cost index funds. Yeah, there you go. So, um, so basically, again, it just matches the index. You say yeah, people say the whole point of active investing here. Let me just let me just break this down. Let me break this down. The whole point of active investing is to beat the market. I beat the market. Right. The market did ten percent. I did fifteen. For sure. The market did eleven uh, percent. I did thirteen. The market did 10, I did 20. 80% of the time, you're not beating the 10%. Right. That's the bottom line. Eight out of 10 people, closer to nine out of 10 people, cannot beat just the market, meaning they can't get 10% returns on their investment. So you're paying all this money for active investors to not beat the market. So what Jack Bogle, Vanguard, said was like, look, just pay a very little bit of money, keep your fees low, keep it simple, bro. Like, if he was a bro, he would have been like, look, yeah. <laughs> just keep it simple, bro. Just keep it simple. Yeah. Keep your costs low. Stop trying to time the market and actively invest and just invest in the index. And over time, you're going to win. And you're going to use your friend compound interest to help you win. So basically, within the, within the S&P 500, to use the NFL analogy, every quarter, they basically what is called rebalance. It's like kind of like every every year, you got to make the team. Every quarter, you got to make the team. Yeah. If you're not doing good, you get cut from the S&P 500. Right, mm. it's like teams are always improving, so it's not the same 500 that are here today won't be here January 1st next year. Look at that, you ain't doing good, you're not in the 500. Because the whole point of the 500, the whole point is for you to say, How's the American economy doing? Take a look at these 500 companies, look at them, 
Some are doing well, some are not doing well, some are doing okay, some are up, some are down. But overall, this is how the American stock market is doing. So it's an indicator, an index is an indicator. S&P 500 is an indicator of how the overall markets are doing. Gotcha. So rather than you being like, like, if I asked you, what stocks do you like? You'd be like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, I invest in the S&P 500. I do index investing and things are going very well. Look at that, dude. I, I, I say that anywhere. Yeah. I'm a genius. Genius. He's like, look, this, anyway, guy, this guy's got his shit together. So index funds are a hot thing right now. So to give you an example, between 2010 and, and 2020, the last 10 years, index funds have grown from 19% of the total fund market to 40%. So they've doubled. Mm. Basically, people used to do active investing. Let me give you a little perspective here. I don't know if we have any Wolf of Wall Street Jordan Belfort fans. I'm sure we do. But back in the day, if you needed to make a stock trade in the 80s, you have to call, have to up, a call up a dude. Yeah. He'd give you his little spiel. He'd sell you on some shit that maybe you didn't even want. He would take a commission. And whether you won or lost money or gained or lost money, he would make some money. So you got a guy that you barely trust cold calling you. And you got this active investor thing going on. Active investor means he's active. He's trading. He's making moves. He's doing all that. Yeah. Passive, he's like, the market did okay today. Active versus passive. Yeah. So you'd have to call the Jordan Belfort of the world. Whether you trust this guy or not, he's the guy in charge of your money. Now, today, I'm not giving... Uh, th there are financial advisors. There are financial planners that are very credible that still do this. But again, eight out of 10 of them don't beat the market, right? So a lot of them will just say, look, maybe you're better served doing passive index investing. Active, active trading, index, passive. Chill out, bro. Chill out, bro. Chill out, bro. Investing shouldn't be fun. So Here, chill out until when? Just until so you, you need it. So maybe, you it's need for, it. maybe it's for maybe it's for retirement. Yeah. Maybe it's ten years. Maybe you got a you got a game plan. Put the money. Whatever in, it forget is. Forget about it. Forget about forget it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Let the let let the pasta sauce marinate. There we go. That's what it comes down to. Anyway, index funds grew from nineteen percent to forty percent of the market share, meaning people are hip to the scene. Now, who, what are some index funds that you guys should look into? Here's a little, here's a little hot tip for you, a little sauce tip. Here's three low-cost low S&P index funds that I've basically checked out and said, yeah, these guys are good. Fidelity, Fidelity 500 index fund, the FXAIX expense ratio, 0.015%, okay? You got the Schwab S&P 500 inde index, SWPPX expense ratio, 0.02%, and then our friends at Vanguard, the S&P 500 ETF VOO expense ratio, 0.03%. Now you're saying 0 0.15, 0 0.015, 0 0.02, expense ratio, 0 0.03. You're like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, I mean, what does that mean? Me. Yeah, what does that mean? Are those more or less than 1%? Those numbers that I just read. Less. 0 0.015, yeah. 0 0.02, 0 0.03. That's are less. those more or less than 1%? Less. Unless those are definitely yeah. less than 1%. 100%. So in the active... Active accounts, actively manage accounts, there's something called AUM, Assets Under Management. It's AKA, how much are you going to charge me to manage my money? And the typical fee is 1%. So if you, uh, okay. Okay, so if you invest a million dollars, 1%, $10,000. Yeah. Okay? Now, if you invest a million dollars in a Vanguard Passive index fund, S&P, 0.03. It's like 30 bucks. Yeah. Huh. 10 grand or 30 bucks? Yeah, I'll take the 30. That's the whole point of passive investing. That's gotcha. the whole point. So all of these different places invest into the same S&P 500, and they're just like, oh, I'll take less from you. That place will take uh, 0 0.05, I'll take 0 0.03. Exactly. And that's the, that's the competition. It's, it's who there, takes less. It's, it's, but with actively managed, the reason that you're paying the 1% is because you trust them to beat the market. Right. If they're not going to beat the market, why the hell would you pay them more? Do, do you have, I mean, which one are you? In? I've done it all. You have all three. I've done it all. I've got index funds. I've got a, someone who's trying to beat the market. I test it out. Mm. Okay. You I've got, I got target date have funds. Them all. Yeah, actively have them all. I've got passive funds. I've got index funds. I'm kind of doing a little this and that and seeing what's going on. But for the most part, Keep it simple. For the most part, you don't need to pay someone to manage your money. If you've got a 401k at home or a Roth IRA, there's something called a target date fund. you got a robo-advisor that charges next to nothing. Just put it in there. Hmm. Time, investing is two things, bro. Time and compound interest. The more time it's in the market, 
The more the compound interest grows, the more money you make. The more money you keep putting in, the more money your, go- your money sure. goes so, up. So you- I'm a huge fan of the stock market. I'm a huge fan of index investing. There it is. I said it. Okay. All right. Great. So, okay. yeah. So, whatever the price is, I mean, 30 bucks, whatever you put in. I mean, yeah, just get into this index fund. These three are great. Three Those are three costs. options. There's gotcha. a fourth option really? called the S&P 500 Equal weight index. I don't want to get too nerdy here, Jeez, but basically, go back to that picture. Can you pull Going that picture back, back up? Oh, sh- sh- so basically, you see how some are bigger than others. Some are, you know, so the, it's called equal weight. Would be like everything gets the same mm. sliver. Okay, so obviously, there's certain companies: Amazon, Apple, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Google, Microsoft. Right? T for Tesla. These companies are crushing it. So there's something called the FANG stocks. You're familiar with FANG? No. F-A-A-N-G stands for Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, or Alphabet, part of Google, whatever. Gotcha. Anyway, FANG stocks make up, I think, um, like 40% of the S&P. See those big-ass blocks? Yeah. It's taking a nice chunk of change. If you say, look, I don't want to invest in the S&P because some companies, if they go under, that could, that could, be, that could screw me over. I don't know. I don't know. There's something called the weight index, S&P 500 equal weight index, where each of these companies will be exactly the same amount. There's different options you could do. That's my point. But I'm assuming less risk, less reward in that. Is that that type of situation? Touche. Touche. But if you don't know where to get started, I always say the easiest place to start is a 401k or an IRA or Roth IRA. Cool. That's like if you're traveling, that's your luggage. Right. But now you got to put shit in your luggage. So what do you put in your luggage? Here's a great thing to put in your luggage. S&P 500. Well, Sauce, I mean, I sure learned something today. Hell yeah, you did. No idea. We okay. bring it up every show. Yeah. Index. What is he saying? What is he saying? Uh, this is me. I'm like, okay. cool. Cool. I have no idea what we're talking about. Well, now do you have a better idea? Totally. So to use an analogy, an account is like your luggage. Hey, I start a 401k. What kind of luggage are you getting? Yeah. Cool. I got the, you know, I got the... You got the big roll away thing, yeah, it's black, moves. whatever. You got, you know, I got I got a that's your just your luggage. Yeah. Now with what are you gonna put in your luggage, right? Like stocks are like shirts. Bonds are like jeans, whatever how you wanna look at it. You need a bunch of different shit. What are you gonna throw in gotcha. there? Gotcha. Shoes, socks, you're traveling, you're traveling for a year. You need underwear, you need pants, you need a stupid hat, you got a fedora. You go to Mexico, you need an outfit. <laughs> Sombrero. Sombrero. <laughs> But the point is, you got to put stuff in yeah. the luggage. The S and P five hundred is basically saying, don't just put one stock in there. To don't just the, put ten stocks in there. The whole fucking thing, dude. Put five hundred stocks in there. Five hundred socks. Dude, one of them's gonna do good. Anyway, exactly. So they're all gonna do good. So in 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 pull up this picture. I want people to get this book. Anyway, oh. there's a book out there. If you're looking Aha. for a book, this book is fantastic. Aha. Jack Bogle, rest in peace. He died a few years ago, pre COVID. Uh, what a G. Okay, I've got my money in Vanguard, full disclosure. You don't have to put your money in Vanguard to even read this book. I don't care. Um, The whole point is he says this. He basically broke it down, and this is where I was like, I don't know. I got money. I'm making money. I'm spending money. I don't know. I got this. Keep it simple. Keep your costs low and stay the course. If you enjoyed that short clip from the Sawscast, click here to watch another. Click here to watch the full episode or just stay broke.